successful economic development is hard to define. Sure, we could look for rising income gains across the spectrum and a transition away from agricultural dependency as hallmarks of success. But none of that means that development will not leave people behind relative to each other. If we put aside for the moment, though, that development could exacerbate inequality, what traits are found among nations that do successfully develop? Most are or become more market-based. Um, command economies and authoritarian regimes often struggle to transition their economies in ways that allow for development, in part because the top-down dictation of how to use factors of production across an economy may interfere with the ability of people in the economy to rationally react to incentives for efficiency. It's hard to transition to an economy if the government picks inefficient but politically popular industries as winners of special protection. This feeds into another trait, which is the existence of a rule of law. Enforced laws deter corruption from the public and private sectors. They present a clear rulebook for domestic and foreign firms to follow, and they protect property rights that encourage capital holders to risk investing in the economy. Speaking of investment, in a prior video I covered how macroeconomic theory suggests that economic investment is funded by savings, making saving an important trait among developed nations. How those savings are used or what economic investment is in and the quality of that investment matters as well. You could probably have predicted also that savings rates are typically low in developing nations, making investment more likely to come from outside of the developing nation. In the 70s, this led to the emergence of a new line of thinking called dependency theory. According to dependency theory, the developing world's destiny is dependent upon the actions of developed, usually Western-oriented nations. If for no other reason than those developed nations are usually the consumers of exports from the developing world. You see, some scholars have modeled world history through what's called world systems theory. In that theory, nations act as part of a globalized system that can be organized into peripheral, semi-peripheral, and core categories. Core nations, which today are mostly organization for economic cooperation and development, or OECD nations, utilize largely high-skill labor on capital-intensive tasks, while peripheral world systems operate largely as supply chains to serve the demands of the core using low-skilled, low, skilled, low uh, high labor processes. This typically is facilitated by free trade, which we know could lift all nations, but similar to economic development domestically, free trade between nations could worsen inequality internationally as rich nations gain more proportionally from consuming the lowest cost produced goods than poor nations do from producing exports. Additionally, these nations depend upon capital investment from abroad to make these exports, since domestic savings rates are so low. All of that means that to an extent, it's in the interest and ability of developed countries to shape the future of development for low income nations. So to get around that dependency, some nations try to practice import substitution, blocking imports of some goods and services and trying to substitute them with domestic production. It can require rapid industrialization of the economy, which is difficult for the original reason that these nations wanted to even pursue import substitution. The capital and necessary talent to utilize it is largely being held by foreign developed nations. As a result, Import substitution had limited success, mostly in Latin America, where nations used more socialist approaches to redistribute income and regional common markets to expand the consumer base for locally produced goods that required scaled up production. Regional common markets aren't just for developing nations either. As Mexico shifted from an import substitution strategy in the early 1990s, it entered a free trade market with the United States and Canada called the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA for short. That agreement came under intense criticism by then presidential hopeful Donald Trump during the 2016 campaign, and was modestly renegotiated after he entered office. None of this though takes into consideration the role of aid and loans in dependency theory. Some theorists suggest that aid from developed nations is about more than just generosity, but also a part of a comprehensive foreign policy executed to protect the international interests of developed nations. If developing nations depend upon aid to balance their public budgets or create direct investment, 
it's reasonable to suspect that those developing nations will be more likely to support the international policy goals of those providing the aid. Separately, loans from global financial intermediaries like the International Monetary Fund or IMF have been viewed under a suspicious lens. If for no other reason, then the financiers of such groups are usually developed Western nations. On top of that, the IMF has been criticized for routinely requiring borrowing nations to implement austerity measures that result in budget cuts and to open domestic economies to imports from the developed world. On more than one occasion, developed nations have been accused of taking advantage of reduced trade barriers to dump surplus agricultural output at low prices in developing nations' markets, undercutting domestic producers who may make up the majority of the economy's output but can't make a profit selling their produce at those low prices. Clearly, economic development is not without its hazards, but some nations like Singapore, South Korea, and Taiwan have come out on the other end arguably for the better. Nations like Chile could be included in that group too, but recent events have pointed to inequality as a source of internal strife there, as well as in the other economies once defined as successfully developing, like Hong Kong and India.